Vinesh was at his California home on 30th January 2019 when he heard the news on TV and panicked. Without wasting any time, he took a flight home and landed safely in India on February 4th. But unlike Vinesh, 25-year-old Shravanti could not leave the US on time. The same day that Vinesh fled, officials from the Immigration and Customs Enforcement aka ICE came to Shravanti's California home and arrested her. Of the 600 students caught in immigration fraud, 400 like Viresh managed to leave the US in time, while 146 were detained and the other 54 are absconding. All these students were already in the United States on genuine F1 student visas and had completed one master's degree. In a bid to extend their visa status as students that would allow them to continue to work in the country under CPT, they enrolled for another master's degree. CPT, a curricular practical training, allows an international student in the US to work while they are still studying, so long as their job is related to their curriculum. And while working as bona fide students, they keep applying for a H1B visa every year in the hope of getting paid. See Bisbo's story on H1B visas. The University of Farmington, Michigan, was a university where many Indians had applied to. They had an active Facebook page detailing weekly events and a professional-looking website. Students from countries other than the United States were encouraged to apply as freshmen or transfer students. Undergraduate tuition was eight and a half thousand dollars a year. While the school's president, Dr. Ali Milani, spoke four languages. Best of all, they gave work permits to pursue CPT from day one after enrollment. It suited the needs of these type of students completely. No need to study, give exams, or attend classes either offline or online. But it was all a trap. In February 2015, ICE set up a fake university as part of an undercover sting operation dubbed Paper Chase. It has been designed to identify recruiters engaged in immigration fraud. The university had no staff, no instructors, no curriculum, and no classes, with a dead end post office box. The school principal Milani didn't even exist, other than on a fake LinkedIn ID. Neither did the treasurer named Omar Parsi mention in the website. So when Santosh Reddy Sama, 28, of Fremont, California, called the university, "Can I enroll as a student without attending classes and extend my student visa while I work?" Unknown to Santosh, he was speaking with an undercover agent. Yes, that is possible. Can I get a discount if I bring other students? Soon, a total of eight students from all over the U.S. contacted undercover agents with identical requests. Santosh and Kandala met with an undercover agent in January 2018 to collect their commission of twenty thousand dollars. Totally, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars was given to the eight agents as kickbacks. All eight were arrested and face up to five years in prison and a fine of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars each. This method of luring a person to commit a criminal offence that he or she may otherwise not have committed is known as entrapment, a controversial but legal tactic used by law enforcement. Some U.S. lawmakers supported the students. Their only mistake was to misunderstand a foreign work study program in their pursuit of higher education. I said the Department of Homeland Security (DHS) defended their tactics. Hundreds of foreign nationals remain in the United States illegally by portraying themselves as students. The Farmington case isn't the first time federal agents have done a sting operation using a phony university. In 2011, a similar operation was done by setting up Tri Valley University in Pleasanton, California, and again in 2016 with the fake University of Northern New Jersey. In yet another sting operation dubbed Varsity Blues, Felicity Huffman, star of hit TV show Desperate Housewives, was charged along with 40 others in a college admission scandal. She and her Hollywood husband William Macy paid fifteen thousand dollars to secretly change her daughter's answers on a SAT test sheet. Released on a signature bond of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Huffman has had to surrender her passport to ICE and needs permission before traveling overseas. Still, another celebrity actress, Lori Loughlin, paid expert teachers like William Singer five hundred thousand dollars or three and a half crore to write SAT tests in place of her daughter's. Prestigious U.S. colleges like Stanford, Yale, Georgetown, and UCLA were involved, as wealthy parents paid coaches to certify their children as athletes, getting them priority admission. Meanwhile, the arrested students, among them at least seven female, are housed in 36 detention centers across the U.S. Some, like Shravanti, 
are radio tagged with an ankle monitor. I was given a map so as not to cross certain city limits and given batteries to ensure my device is charged. If she were to leave the country voluntarily, she would still be barred from re-entry into the United States for three to five years. If the government were to deport her, she would be banned for ten. Of course, they can post bail of between four and twenty-five thousand, stay back, hire an attorney to fight their case, but it can take years, and lawyers charge anything upwards of hundred and fifty dollars per hour. The Indian government has given the detained students consular access while diplomatic efforts are on. We have urged the U.S. to release them from detention and not to resort to deportation against their will. Of the 146 arrested students, 145 were from India, and of them, 140 from Andhra or Telangana. Yes, we know you're dying to know who the 146th was. 29-year-old Naila Kasim Musarsa from West Bank, Palestine. Various state associations are helping with legal advice, petitioning the Indian ambassador, and liaisoning with family back home. However, it is quite clear to all that the students were fully aware that it was a pay-to-stay scam. Else, why did 400 of them fly back to India in haste? The Indian government has released a draft version of the Emigration Bill 2019, where students may need to register with the government before joining a university abroad. For anyone who wants to study abroad or who has family studying in the U.S., there are lessons you can learn. The University of Farmington offered work permits from day one and provided credits for previous courses. If it's too good to be true, then it could be a trap. Lesson number two: Just because everyone's doing it doesn't make it safe. Use your own mind. There are no shortcuts to success. The big, beautiful American dream has turned into a nightmare for these Indian students staying in prison, waiting for their trial. This boils Limerick. Indian students were entrapped in an admission scam by undercover officers masquerading as an educating man. But they should have known better that CPT is never. Offered from day one in any university plan. Subscribe to Bizbo's channel and be sure to click on the bell icon. Be the first to know when Bizbo releases a new video.